Okay, let's do a bit of an introduction to our studio so you can try to get your head around it. Okay, now I'm going to install, assume that you've already installed R uh, using the installation instructions that I've provided to you. And also, you need to also go through the installation of R Studio, which is like a, a user interface for R that makes it just a little bit more user friendly. So I'm going to assume that you've already done that. And this is a bit of an introduction on how to use R Studio. So I've just got a shortcut link to our studio here, so we'll open it up. And that's the interface. I'll also call up the uh, instructions document for this section. So you'll have one that looks pretty much very similar to this. I'll keep it right up there as well, so, um, so we can work through it together. Okay, so you can see here that you've installed R, that you've installed R Studio. You need to have also installed the data uh, for unit one and in particular the file cycle underscore world dot csv which is a comma separated variable file that uh, can be read by Microsoft Excel or, or R and or many other programs. Uh, a copy of the R Studio introduction text file as well which I've just put in this uh, data file here, data folder there. And uh, you've obviously found this YouTube video. So the R Studio uh, is a graphical user interface. We've got a console here where we can actually type commands. And uh, we've also got um, two little panes um, over here that we'll be using as well. Okay, so, so let me take you through it just by way of an example. Now, the first thing that it's a good idea to do is to tell R Studio where your data files are located uh, to make it easier to load them up. So, so to do that, you go to the um, uh, so to the session, set working directory, choose directory, and uh, I just put mine in a really uh, simple location, uh, just in the um, just in the root directory C under data. So that's where I put mine. So you'll need to sort of point it to the appropriate folder where you've put all your data files. And you notice as we did that, it actually has put here a command set wd which means set working directory brackets uh, then inverted commas c colon slash data that tells it where to find it so so it's done that command for us which is nice okay the next thing we need to do is to load the data file um, into a data frame um, uh, so basically load it into r so that we can uh, start analyzing the data to do that you go to import data set over here so in this top right panel, import data set from local file. Now because we've set up our workspace to be uh, in the right folder, um, our cycle underscore world file is just there. We open it and you can actually rename it here, but I'll just leave it under the default file name uh, so that all the, the script's going to work. And we can just leave it under all the default settings. So, so we import it there and I'll go into the next page over here. Okay, so we've done that, we've found cycle world, we've um, imported the data. Okay, now um, notice it's showing us um, what that data looks like. So it shows us the key um, names of all the variables. We've got um, customer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, their ages, their incomes, the number of times that they go cycling each week on their mountain bike, the number of miles per week that they go that they ride. So this is American data and the particular product, um, mountain bike product that they um, they purchased, which we've just called one, two, and three. Now it doesn't matter for the sake of this, what model that refers to. So it's just a model number there. Okay, so we can have a look at the data. Now that might look like a spreadsheet, but it's not a spreadsheet. You actually can't edit it. Um, so it's um, so it's just for, so we can have a, a look to see what the data looks like and what the, the variables are. In fact, actually ask, um, R isn't very good at editing data. So I think the best way, if you do want to edit and change data, the best way to do it is in a spreadsheet program. And then to um, save it rather than as a spreadsheet, save it as a CSV is probably one of the best formats. And then import your data directly into R from that. But trying to sort of manage and manipulate data in R is pretty challenging and it's more for advanced users. So, so the best place, place to manipulate that is in a spreadsheet. So we've got the data in there. Now, something that's a, that's not very user-friendly to most people when they first start out with R is that it uses command lines. And if you've never done any programming before, that's pretty freaky. 
But um, but what I've done for this course is I've given you all the scripts and all the commands that you need to do for things. So, so generally you just learn by doing um, with this kind of material. And we'll go through some examples now just to to help you to do that. So, okay. So, um, so with the um, so let's go through some example commands on on uh, on this data set. Um, one of the first things we can do is just call up a list of uh, scripts that I've given you, so you don't have to type them all out. To do that, I'm going to click on Files here, okay, and then it's defaulted to my home working directory. And I've I've got this file here called R Studio Introduction Text. Now that has all the commands that we're going to do. And this is the nice thing about doing this thing with code is that I can actually give you the scripts, and you can just copy and paste them in, and it'll just work for you. Hopefully, if we've got everything right, um, and um, and if you need to do something yourself which is similar, you can just change some of the, the bits and pieces, some of the variable names here and there, and you can make it work for you too. Okay, so so the first thing that we're gonna do is just um, display some summary statistics for the variables there. Now, to do any kind of commands, you go down to the command console down here in the bottom left, and you type it in. So we can type in uh, summary, open brackets, cycle, underscore world. Now, Summary is a command to say, give me the summary statistics, which is mean, sort of median, standard deviation, all those kind of numbers. The brackets tells it to, to load up the, um, the data frame, um, which we named cycle underscore world. So do that, and if we press enter, it'll give us a whole lot of summary statistics. Now I've got my window a little bit squeezed up here, so it doesn't look all that nice, but here we've got our variables of customer, um, which is just a number actually, so it's not very useful getting summary statistics on the identification number of the customer, but we can see here for age, the minimum, the first quartile, which is a quarter of the way through the data, the median, mean, third quartile, and the maximum value there. So we've just got some basic descriptive statistics there for um, uh, for um, uh, for each of those variables there um, with, the, um, with the sort of middle and the... Um, and uh, the first and the third quartile. Okay, um, you can also, um, if you don't want to type these things out as well, uh, I've just given you the commands in this text file. So uh, you can just grab the text cycle world equals read dot, oh no, sorry, summary, <laughs> we're doing this, summary <laughs> brackets uh, cycle world, so you can just copy that in. I'm just pressing control C and control V on Windows. So you can just copy that in and you'll see it doing it there again. Now the next thing to do is to plot a histogram. So how do we plot a histogram? Well, we use the hist command. Okay, so again, just co try copying and pasting that command here from the hist command there down to the command console. So I'm just going control C, control V to paste it down there. And we get a histogram. Now, what does all this gobbledygook down here mean? Well, hist is the command for doing a histogram. We open up brackets. The cycle world tells us what data frame, um, what sort of um, sort of rectangle of data um, that we need to read the variable from. And you can see we've just got one data frame in here, up here, which is a cycle underscore world. Okay, um, the dollar sign says to look inside that data frame for a variable called age. So cycle underscore world is the data frame up here. The dollar sign tells us to look inside that and age is the variable there. Now the rest of these are just um, some different arguments uh, that I've provided to provide some labels and some other things. So for starters I've got the color, col is um, the command for color equals and I I used a, a really nice gray color um, there, um, not particularly colorful. For the, the bin widths, um, for the breaks, so how wide those bins are for each of those histograms, um, I've set it equal to FD, um, which is the friedman uh, um bin widths that we talked about in, in our first understanding data uh, unit. I wanted uh, the... the um, uh, the horizontal axis down here, the x-axis, to be labeled with age. So I've just done x label, x lab, 
equal age and the main title to be called histogram of ages. Now you notice it's not particularly good looking. Um, R is not very good at making good looking plots, but it is excellent at doing analysis. So, so if you want really good looking plots, sometimes you just sort of grab the data and, and go into Excel and, and do the charts over there. But R is very, very good for doing statistical analysis of data. Okay, so that's a histogram done. So let's do some other things. Uh, let's have a look at um, doing a box plot, um, which we also talked about in class. So um, a simple way to do a box plot is to use the box plot command. There are a few other ways to do it as well. Um, but we use just the basic box plot command here. So I'm just going to copy and paste um, the, the script from over here and down here. And do that. So, so now we have a box plot of um, people, customers' incomes by product line. Now this basic box plot command, unfortunately, it doesn't put in the mean there as a dot or an asterisk, does it? but it does give us the median, which is good. So it gives us the median, gives us the whiskers there, and it will give us um, outliers as well as dots along here. So, Okay, so there's a better box plot, um, uh, there's a better box plot function, which we'll use um, a bit later on in some of the other examples. So, um, uh, so here we can see um, that there's product line one, two, and three. We've got um, the sort of the the middle fifty percent of the data here by the boxes of the incomes for the for the customers who bought those two products, and we can see here that this uh, the um, the incomes seem to be considerably higher for these customers who buy this third um, product, um, this third particular type of mountain bike. Now you can go back to your previous diagrams just by going the forward and backwards button here. And you can also write, um, you can also um, export um, any of these images to, um, to an image or you can save it as a PDF. And that's particularly useful uh, if you want to save it as an image, if you want to um, import it into a Microsoft Word report or, or something like that. Okay, so you got files and uh, the plots. Okay, let's do some, um, uh, let's just do some other commands. So uh, another command that's quite useful is to just have a look at what um, data frames you have open at any particular time. That's the, um, the list command. Uh, so ls and just um, open and close brackets. You can also see it up here in this panel up here. Now something that's really important with, uh, with uh, R is to try to keep your data frames tidy and not to have too many open at one time, especially if you're not actually using them. So this is the last um, that we'll be using um, this data frame for this particular um, introduction. So I'm going to now delete it. And the way to delete it is to use the remove command, rm cycle world, and then that will ditch it. And you'll see it's gone from up there in that environment as well. Okay. So it's now removed, so it's nice and clean, and we have no data sets loaded up. Now, I also want to show you how to calculate some um, probabilities uh, based on the normal distribution uh, for use with the understanding data on topic. So the command for that is um, p norm for a normal distribution, probability of a normal distribution. So p norm. Now, if you want... Um, the probability of being to the left of um, two standard uh, two um, a z score of two, so two standard deviations to the left of the middle. What's the probability of being less than that, which would be um, a low number? Um, two two point two seven five percent. Okay, so so if you imagine two standard deviations to the left of the middle, it's a probability of being less than that. And uh, we also talked about. So if you can actually put in uh, the numbers directly as well. So what is the probability of being sort of less than a value of 21 if the mean is equal to 25 and the standard deviation is equal to 2? Now, if you remember what we covered in class, um, how many standard deviations is 21 away from 25? Well, if the standard deviation is 2, 21 is 2 standard deviations to the left. So that means the z score is minus two, and we should get the same probability 
as um, we got just by the previous command there. So let's try that out. And yes, we got exactly the same probability, 2.275%. You can also work backwards uh, from a probability to get a Z score. So the formula for that is Q norm. Um, so if you put in 0 0.022, oh, that's a painful, too painful to type out. I'm just going to actually copy and paste the command here. Okay, so I do a typo. There you go. So if we put in that probability, we should get back to a Z score of minus two. And if you want to calculate the value of X directly, again, you can use the QNORM function there. So put in the probability, and if you give it a mean of 25, standard deviation of two, it will tell you the value of X, which is 21. Uh, so we're back to where we started. Okay, so that's a really quick introduction to our studio. Um, and uh, I'll do some more uh, tutorial videos on, on, on different um, examples. But what we've done there is we've opened up our studio, uh, we've set our um, we've set the folder uh, where our studio will be looking for all of our data files, and we've uh, loaded up our data into the data frame, the cycle world data into a data frame, so we can actually do some analysis on that. And then we did summary statistics and uh, some histograms, box plots, and also some probabilities. So I hope that was a good introduction and I'll do some more videos to help you with, uh, with learning how to use R.